Did you guess my costume? <laughs> Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another spooky video. And I am so excited guys, this is the first time I have ever done a costume tutorial on my channel and it's most definitely not going to be the last. Yes, in case you haven't already seen my YouTube shorts or on my TikTok page, I revealed earlier this week that my official 2024 Halloween costume is the legendary Hatbox Ghost from The Haunted Mansion. The version from the ride, of course. And so to keep the intro very short and very sweet, Sabrina Carpenter style, I put this costume together in three easy steps. First with the wardrobe, second with makeup, and third with any props. And so without further ado, I'm gonna hand this video over to Disney Nikki from back in September, and we are getting started on our Hatbox Ghost costume tutorial. Hello, day one of Hatbox Ghost costumes. Sorry for this. Okay, so for day one, I need to start off with some sort of base for the costume. I typically do something really involved for Halloween costumes, but I always have to start off with a basic look. For my Jack Skellington costume I did a couple years ago, it was the suit. For my Hades look, it was more so the bed sheets that I fiddled together to create his robes. But for this year, for Hatbox Ghost, he really does have this sort of basic look. I do already have a lot of items that he wears from just accumulating them over the years, but I really want to take today to sort of start putting that together. The thing about this costume that's going to make it super easy is that the Hatbox Ghost wears a cape, which means I essentially don't have to worry about the back of my costume. I already do have a big long cape with his collar. He does have a popped collar, which I will insert a photo of here. And so the good thing is when I put this on and tie it, like so, I am able to pop the collar. Obviously it's not nearly as big as his, but it does cover the back of my neck, and so that won't necessarily be seen. But for right now, I have this, which is quite long. Whoosh. Oh, I should try to change that into a transition. That could be cool. But yeah, because I have this, essentially, a lot of the back of me is already covered, which is really helpful. But what's not covered is the front, and the front is kind of difficult because if you look at the picture of the Hatbox Ghost, he has rib cage that is showing, but he's also wearing a long, like, trench coat kind of thing. So I'm really gonna have to, like, think about this and figure out what I want to do, and so I'm gonna start out by looking at what I have in my closet. First of all, easy enough, black pants. I have two pairs of black pants, I'm just gonna try them on and see which one I like the look of better. So I have tried them both on and I've deduced that it's going to be the tux pants that I got back in ninth grade and I still somehow fit into. Now as for his shoes, he does have on these sort of like boots, but I'm definitely not wearing boots to the parks. If you were thinking about ever doing a look for the parks, make sure you are wearing something comfortable. You can do dress shoes, but I would definitely make sure it's something that you can walk in for five to seven hours. Because if you're paying to get into the party, I definitely recommend running around and taking advantage of all of the time that you have. So let's see what I have for shoes. So it appears that the best thing that I have for both look and function are going to be these. These are sort of like a light black, you could say, like a grayish sort of shoe. They're dirty. But these are functional. I tried them on and I definitely think they're something that I can walk in for a good amount of time. They have a little bit of brown in the back, but again, I really don't think people are going to be looking at the shoes, especially when I have such intricate makeup and also a hat box in my hand, which has an additional head in it too. Give and take in certain areas. <laughs> so yes, with shoes, black socks, one sec, black socks. So with the black shoes, the black socks, and the black tux pants, I officially have the bottom half of my costume done. Slay. Now we need to figure out the top half of me. So again, looking at this picture of him, he has the long trench coat that kind of has like a see-through on the chest that shows his rib cage. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for that. I do have a black button-down shirt, like a dress shirt, but also he doesn't have a collar, so I don't really wanna go for that. And I also have a black turtleneck, which might possibly work, let me see. This is said turtleneck. It is a turtleneck. <laughs> but yes, I'm thinking if I end up wearing this and then try to look for a long trench coat. Long trench coat I do not have, for sure. So that's really gonna be the only part of my costume that I don't have. 
Also, this entire costume has like a bluish hue in the ride, but for the actual costume, I think I kind of just want to stick with the full black look. I think I really do like the actual vibe of like an all in black and white hatbox ghost. I think that's really cool. So yes, let's vibe with that for right now. So we don't have the trench coat, which I still need to look for, but the final part of the clothing for the costume is going to be the hat. Now, I remember from a long time ago, the Haunted Mansion store in Disney World actually sold a top hat, which is really good quality and really good looking, and I know it's in my closet somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, what an interesting turn of events. I found options. If you know me, I love having options. That is amazing. Okay, so I did in fact find the top hat from the Haunted Mansion store. It has this lovely band around it with the wallpaper from the Haunted Mansion. I think this is really cool and really goes with like the whole grayish black aesthetic that I'm going for, especially with these shoes. And it even has the little emblem right in the middle for the Haunted Mansion, love. And the inside is purple, not that you're gonna see that, but kind of cool. So if we try it on, all right, it is, <laughs> it fits perfectly. Okay, so obviously, it's not perfect. It's great. This one will need some work to fit my head properly. However, I think this is a possibility. Now, the other option that I found in the closet was a hat that I didn't know that I had, which is this. This is a like overemphasized top hat with a red ribbon around it. However, the cool thing about this one is it has an elastic band, which will fit to somebody's head. So if I try this one on, kind of cool. I have my hair up right now, so it's not going as far down as it actually would. Hang on, let me try to take my hair down. So if I put, if I put this one on, oh, yeah, that is so over the top. Yeah, from far away, that's kind of crazy. I think I'm gonna end up going with this one. Okay, so for right now, I think I'm gonna put on every single costume piece that I've put together so far and get sort of a fit check day one. We will see the vibes, we'll see how it's going, and I think this might be it for today because I do have some preparations to do for my next big put my costume together day. Okay, let's do that cool transition. Wah, wah. Okay, that was probably a really bad transition, but that's fine. Oh, this thing is hot. Whew. Great. So in an interesting turn of events, I actually found a dress coat that I think is going to work really well and I might not even need the trench coat because this one actually comes down pretty far. And if I'm like bent over, it kind of comes down like mid thigh, which could kind of work. In addition, I also was fiddling around with my hair and I'm not necessarily sure if I'm going to need a wig anymore. My hair seems long enough to actually pass as the Hatbox Ghost's hair, which is kind of cool. However, that now brings up the problem of the hat is too big, obviously. So honestly, easy enough. I might just be able to put some like foam or like bubble wrap in my hat and that could like fill it out so that way I don't need to make any other alterations to it. So yes, this is exactly what I did to the hat. I just took the hat, put in some bubble wrap and then some tissue paper, which helped to form the top of the hat to my head. And that is how I got the hat to work. I don't address that anywhere else in the video. It kind of just appears on my head and it just looks like it fits perfectly, but that was not the case. I did end up filling up the hat just so you're aware. <laughs> and so as a day one recap really quick, I now have the black grayish shoes. I'm wearing black socks. I have the black tux dress pants, which work really well. I found a black jacket that goes down past my waist and I am kind of satisfied with it. In addition, I have the black turtleneck, but then I have the cape and finally the hat, which is honestly a really good start and I'm feeling really confident because really the only thing that I have to do at this point is create the entire hat box and the head that's gonna go in it and figure out my makeup. Now, at this point in the process, I also did imagine painting my hands. That plan later changed when I realized how long the makeup process actually takes me. And so I ended up adding black gloves onto this final look and it ended up working out just perfectly. So all of these costume pieces that I just mentioned are true, but I just added some simple black gloves to go along with the look and to mask the fact that I did not want to paint my hands for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And this is just day one of finding things around my house to put together to make the Hatbox Ghost costume. Am I just like the best at Disney Halloween DIY? 
Maybe. <laughs> all right, so that is it for me today. I am going to take all of this off because it is extremely hot, which is another potential problem I could run into at the parks. But you know what? It's one night. We're going to make it work. And so this is going to be it for tonight. I'm going to take this off and put it all together in one section so I don't lose anything. And then I will come back to you next time I'm going to work on this. And hopefully I don't look nearly as scary as this. Okay, bye. Did you miss me? It's been a while since the last time you've seen me, as today is September 28th. Yes, I am a procrastinator. <laughs> but today's adventure is makeup. I am really gonna try to like hone in on the specific Hatbox Ghost look that I want for my face, because in order to make the entire Hatbox and the face that is gonna go inside of the box, I really have to know what I want this to look like before I start that other project. I know, isn't it shocking I'm not wearing any ghost makeup yet? <laughs> I know. So, my mission has now become to construct this Hatbox Ghost makeup. I think I am primarily going to be going off of this image, as it sort of gives me the best look at his face. Again, I'm going for a ride accurate look, but not sure how that's gonna turn out. He's very blue in this photo, but I'm going to start with a base of gray. So for my Hades look last year, if you guys ever saw that on my Instagram, I'll put a picture up here, but I used this Star Blend Cake Makeup as a base, which was which is a gray color. It is the base for um, that look. And on this little um, label on the back, it says it has a 30 month opening period. I only opened it last year, so I'm assuming it's still good. I will definitely know by tomorrow if I am completely broken out, as you can see I already am. What's the harm? Let's, let's give it a go. Yes, I also did want to supply an update on the makeup. It all came off very easily. The only thing that was a little tough was the eyeliner, but it came out with a few makeup wipes and left little to no skin irritation for me, so. This works really good. This is a water activated little gray cake. I know it's completely washed out with my lighting, but it is a gray, it's in the shade light gray, but it is a pan stick essentially that you get wet and then it will transfer the color onto your face. I'm gonna try to use as few products as possible to get this done because I don't love to spend a lot of money on makeup that I'm not gonna wear super often. And I also, a few years ago, picked up this Pro Fusion Cosmetics Winter Ballroom 35 Shade Palette. And the reason I got this is because it was super, super discounted. I think it was on clearance and I also had other coupons. So I ended up with 35 colors for like, three bucks. It was really, really cheap. And I'm telling you right now, you do not need expensive makeup to pull off one of these incredible looks. Well, incredible is pending. <laughs> I'm also trying to keep this as simple as possible because I am taking this entire look with me to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and will have to replicate it in my room before the party. So I am going to take this over in my bathroom, get it wet, and I will be right back and we will start on the makeup. Okay, okay. The makeup cake is wet. I'm gonna put my hair up because I do not want premature gray hair. Guy is so unbelievably attractive. Hot, really hot. And about to get even hotter. Here we go. So essentially I'm taking the little cake and I am just going to start with a one layer all over the face gray look. This is still looking pretty good after a full year of not being used. This might work. And I am gonna take this everywhere because it's essentially my foundation base. The shadows will end up setting this. I also did heavily debate on blocking out my eyebrows but I'm going to see if I end up liking the way that this looks without blocking out my eyebrows, specifically because that's more steps and more waiting time that I'm gonna have um, with putting this together. And again, because I am doing this look right before the Halloween party, I do kind of want to be as efficient as possible, both with time and with number of products I'm gonna have to bring. Wow, this is attractive. <laughs> but I'm just gonna finish up my forehead really quick and then I'm gonna start actually setting the face and I think I'm going to leave the eyes, nose, and mouth until the very end to add more makeup on. Yeah, 
And if you are looking to replicate this look at home, please know that you can also use extremely cheap makeup brushes. I think e.l.f. currently has a line of brushes at major drugstores like Walgreens, CVS, um, that are all relatively cheap and very synthetic so you can clean them easily. Kind of cool if you didn't know. Okay, but that is the base done. Obviously my lips and my eyes aren't done yet. Um, so I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna start going in with contour and trying to get the exact look of Hatbox Ghost. Again, this is my reference. So I am thinking where I want to start is the cheekbone area because he has very, very defined cheekbones and also a slimmer jaw. So I'm gonna have to take in this jaw a little bit. So from the front, it looks like my cheekbones are significantly more prominent. I am going to dip into this darker gray color, which kind of looks blue on camera, and also a little bit of the black to try to make that like dark gray shade. Never mind, I found a dark gray shade. We're gonna dip into that. <laughs> and we are going to start in on the contour. <laughs> All right, so now that I have the light contour done, I am going to move on to some of the deeper detailed lines that are around his face, which are primarily the lines that are happening around his upper lip and lower lip. And then later we are going to go on and draw in the lips for the smile. And I actually am going to be using my own teeth for this look. So starting in with that still lighter gray color, but mixed in with a little bit of a black, so we can get a little bit more of the details. And I'm going in with a thinner brush here. Alrighty, so for the majority of the base and contour, I am quite happy with how this is turning out. I think it is very good in terms of reference to this photo. Now what's really fun about the eyes is that I am taking the black all the way up to my eyebrow as he has a really large and deep socket. And I am actually going to draw in another eyebrow above. So I will show you all of that and hopefully that will also make sense as you see it. There is the eyes with the base color. Now I'm going to go in and create the socket with the dark black color. So this is the general outline of one eye socket done. Now the other really cool thing about the Hatbox Ghost is that his other eye actually has a raised eyebrow, like a higher arch on one side, but not the other. So you'll notice my eye socket shapes are going to be two different shapes, and that is on purpose, because one of them you want to sort of be a straight across. I'm gonna have the eyebrow up here and it's gonna be more straight, and this one is going to come straight and have a little bit more of an arch to make him look like he's kind of doing this with my natural eyebrow.
There is the other eye socket. As you can see, it's kind of subtle, but this one is more straight across. This one does have the arch. Yes, this asymmetry with the eye sockets is definitely, definitely a big characteristic of Hatbox Ghost. Even to the point where when I ended up putting this entire costume together for the final reveal, I even overemphasized it even more because it's such a big quality that he has. He's always like raising one eye to make it seem like he's like more unhinged. But yes, this is the more subtle version of the asymmetry and eye sockets. For the final reveal, I did take that arch even higher and I definitely recommend you do that so that way it is more noticeable. So with that, I'm going to grab a thin eyebrow brush and I'm going to try to create new eyebrows on top of my current eyebrows, which are a part of my eye sockets now, to create the Hatbox Ghosts brow shape. That was harder to say than you think. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we have the eyebrows. See how this one is just a little bit higher on purpose? I kind of love that he has that little intentional smirk, always. So I am now going to go ahead and fill in all of the eye sockets with black. All right, so these are the eyes all complete, I believe. Um, I might do some dark liner in the waterline because my waterline is very white. So I think I might do that. But next, I definitely want to move on to the nose because the nose is the next biggest part of the transformation. So let's move on to this nose because I need to create a skeleton nose on top of this schnoz. <laughs> now to create that skull nose that he has, I'm going to start off with um, the exact placement of my nostrils, but I'm going to extend them. That is the general shape that I am going to now take upwards towards the eye socket. Very slowly, but very surely, because I'm not sure how far up I want to take them. So while his nose is actually very, very close to his actual sockets, I do have a bit of a longer nose and I don't really want to trick it that far up with makeup to the point where it looks ridiculous. So I think I am just going to match this shape onto my other nostril and I'm going to see how that looks. I'll decide if I want to take it up a little bit further after that. I am kind of 
liking this shape. I think I'm gonna stick with it. I do just wanna even it out a little bit, but I think I'm gonna stick with this general location in terms of how far I'm going up with the nostrils. Those are pretty even as far as I can tell. So I think I'm going to move on to the mouth. Now for the lips, I am going in with a black lipstick, just the cheapest black lipstick you can find. But I am also gonna go in with that sharp brush that I used for my eyebrows because he has a very, very thin but wide mouth. I am going to end up taking my inner corner of my lip all the way up to this little divot here and I'm going to end up shading in this area with dark shadow afterwards. So again, just taking a little bit of that lip color onto my brush. I'm going to start painting a very thin line from the corner of my mouth. like that. And again, it's okay if it's a little bit thicker than this, but you do want to keep it as thin as possible because he has very, very thin lips. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Next, I'm going to take the black lipstick and go over my natural lips, which are very thin. But if you happen to have thicker lips, I would definitely go over your lips with that base color, this original pan stick, and then create thinner lips on top using the black lipstick. And of course, you can always clean up your lip line with that liner brush and your black lipstick. Cool, now that I have the black lips, I am going to connect my lips very slightly with this line because I wanna make this look more like part of my lips than as a part of the other shadow. So see that's starting to look from back here, a little bit longer like a part of my mouth. So I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side. Next, I'm gonna take just a tiny little bit more of that black shadow and I'm gonna pack it right in this little light triangle here. That is going to become a little part of the contour. Like that. Yeah. See how that really brings out that jawline right here? Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, this is coming together. So I will say one thing I'm not going to do right now, but that I will do for the actual Halloween party is to paint a portion of my neck a dark color because I actually do have a black turtleneck that is going to come up to approximately here on me for the actual party, but I don't want any of my flesh tone coming through. I do want any and all part of my neck to fade into the background of my cloak. So I will do just a thin line of black underneath my jawline, and if I need to, I'll bring it down just to here. But the purpose of that black is really just to hide my neck and make it disappear into the rest of my costume. So this is pretty much it for me. The last and final step I'm gonna do is take a black eyeliner and go along the waterline because I really do have a very light waterline. And so I kind of want to bring that black just a little bit further to make his eyes very beady. Fair warning, I'm going into my eye with some eye makeup. So if eye makeup makes you a little squeamish, just skip ahead a few seconds. <laughs> Yeah, see how that's already different from that white waterline? That really helps to add a little bit more to it. But with that, friends, I believe this is the finished portion of the makeup test. 
I am very, very happy with how this look turned out, and I really don't think there's going to be anything that I'm going to do different. Again, you might say from right here that the eye sockets are not necessarily as dark, but keep in mind, I am going to be outside at night and not in front of all of this beauty lighting that I have set up, so a lot of the imperfections are really going to be hidden at night. Yes, I am very, very happy with this. I'm going to do one thing before I sign off for today, which is to try this on and see what we think. <gasps> Guys, that is the Hatbox Ghost. Oh my god, I am so happy with this. And for all of those wondering, I will not be wearing a wig as my light hair actually down around my face is very reminiscent of his own hair in the ride. So with my hair down and with this little hat on, I really think this is going to... <gasps> Guys, this is so cool. Oh my God. Okay, I am so, so, so happy with how this turned out. Thank you for tuning in today. And the next time you see me, we will be creating the entire hat box and the false head that will be going inside the hat box, which I will be carrying around with me at the Magic Kingdom. Alrighty, friends, let's jump into our final segment before the big reveal. Before we get started, let me take you through a few items that you will need in order to create my version of the hat box ghosts hat box. Yes. <laughs> so first and foremost, I grabbed this black bucket from the dollar store. Again, I'm using cheap materials, so you do not need to go all out. These acetate sheets are really helpful for being able to see through the box. I also grabbed some black poster board, which is going to turn out to be the lid. A pencil is going to be very helpful. And this is also a skull that I got from the dollar store that I just painted with my own makeup. I grabbed some black tissue and some acrylic paints and a sponge that is going to help me paint. You will also need some scissors. Younger viewers, make sure you get your parents' help with this. I grabbed some black ribbon, and the final thing is some black duct tape. And also keep in mind, I grabbed a very cheap white wig that I am going to use as the head in the hat box's hair. That was a sentence I hope you will understand Maybe. You'll see when it comes along. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get started on the creation. Hello, Disney Nikki. Alright, so first and foremost, I want to create the lid. So I'm removing the original handle of the bucket and turning it over onto my black poster board. And with my pencil, I am going to trace the top of the bucket onto the poster board. And eventually we're going to cut that out and that will serve as the lid. Now keep in mind, my little black bucket does have this little spout thing on the side. We are going to get rid of that. So when I'm tracing it onto the black poster board, I do leave that little divot out. And what I did was I tried to line up the little black bucket as best I could to try to fill in the remaining side so that, I, so that way I had a perfect circle but I am just going to take some scissors. Again, do this very carefully if you are a younger viewer or do not be afraid to help ask for your parent or guardian's permission. And I am taking those scissors and starting to cut out the circle from my black poster board. And in a second, we're just going to see if that measures up to the actual lid of the bucket. Cool, it is looking good, so let's try it on top, and it works perfectly. Now, of course, there is still that little question of the spout. What are we gonna do? Well, it just so happens that I got lucky enough that coming from the dollar store, this little black bucket was flimsy enough that I could cut through it with my scissors. Again, if you're going to do this, please exercise extreme caution. I really want you guys to make sure that you are being safe while creating this awesome Hatbox Ghost look. But yes, as of right now, we are just cutting off the little spout and we are going to fill in that hole later with some of the poster board that we just cut the lid from. And through putting that poster board in that little hole area and painting it later, it totally camouflages that hole that we are leaving there. And you'll never know it. All right, next we're going to grab the acetate sheet. Now, this acetate sheet is basically just a clear plastic sheet but I am actually going to create a window in the front half of the hat box. I'm measuring the acetate sheet onto the little bucket right now, and I'm going to cut out the area that that acetate sheet is going to 
cover for that entire box. And basically putting this little window in is just going to ensure that you can see through the box and see the little head that I'm going to put in there later. See how I put my hand in there? You'll be able to see inside later. And now I will be completely honest, this next step is totally overkill, but I just wasn't happy with how shiny my bucket was. And so I grabbed some black and gray paint and I decided to completely cover the bucket inside and out with black paint. I also did the same very thing to the lid because I wanted the lid to match the little bucket as best as possible. And after this, I'm gonna grab the gray paint and you will notice that I am painting only on the top and bottom of the bucket. This is because he has a very thin gray stripe along the very bottom of his hat box, as well as along the very top of the hat box right near the lid. Again, this really could be optional if you wanted it to be. But next I'm grabbing a little piece of that poster board and taping it in place of where the spout was on my bucket. I make sure to reinforce that quite a few times with some scotch tape, so that way I know it's not gonna move anywhere. And then after it is all secured, I'm just going over it with some black paint. And while you can see it here in my little room lighting, definitely when we're outside, it camouflages so incredibly well. Even right now, it doesn't look the worst. And knowing how good it looked inside, I am absolutely confident that at night, in the dark, this is going to be totally fine and you won't ever, ever notice it. <laughs> All right, but next I am grabbing some black tissue paper. Now, if you know the hatbox ghost's head, when it disappears and appears inside of the hatbox, it kind of looks like it's floating a little bit, and I wanted to create that sort of effect. I didn't necessarily want to install a full fog machine. I think that was a little bit overkill. And so I decided to crumple up some black tissue and fill the box with it everywhere except where I was going to put that final head. And it sort of, in the dark, creates this effect that the head is floating in some dark smoke, which I really love, and I'm very happy that it turned out that way. And this is the head before I painted it, and I just wanted to make sure. And as you can see, it kind of looks like it's floating a little bit off of the bottom of the bucket. And I really liked the way this was turning out so far. Alrighty, at this point you can go ahead and paint that head. Again, I did it just the exact same way that I did my face, so no different. And then I placed the white wig behind it. This is a very cheap, cheap, cheap wig. Do not go out and buy something expensive, but this is how it was looking, and I am so incredibly happy with how it came out. But then I am going to do the final little step here and just secure the lid on top of the bucket and also create a handle. So measuring the lid on top of the bucket, I'm using some scissors to cut into the bucket and also the lid to create some holes. And we're going to end up using that ribbon to tie the two sides of the bucket to the lid. And once that lid is secured on top of the bucket itself, we'll be able to pick it up from the handle. These two little holes in the center are going to be for the handle, and the two on the sides are for fastening the lid to the bucket. But now I'm just grabbing some duct tape and reinforcing all of those holes because it is poster board, and I wanted to make sure it was a little bit more secure. Again, just grabbing those scissors and poking through the duct tape and starting to cut and measure some ribbon. Now the ribbon, I ended up cutting two different sizes. The center, where the handle is, is a little bit longer. I wanted to make sure my hand had enough room with the glove in order to be able to hold the hat box properly. And in this video, I only did one ribbon in the center, but I ended up reinforcing it with another two ribbons, just in case one of them were to break at the party. I wanted to really reinforce that handle, so I did end up going in with three ribbons. Now for the two side ribbons, I did a little bit smaller, and so you were able to fasten them and they wouldn't be too distracting. But my friends, with all of this, it brings us to the end of the hat box, and I am so incredibly happy with how this turned out. Ooh, I can't wait to put it together. 
So with that, my friends, we've got the clothes, we've got the makeup, and we've got the hat box. All that's left is to put it all together. But for how good this costume came out, I really wanted to put a full montage together. And guys, I am so incredibly proud of how this turned out. A really big shout out to my friend Michaela and my mom for helping me film this entire segment of the video. I also do want to give a brief, brief disclaimer that this section of the video might be a little frightening to some younger viewers. So viewer discretion is advised. But keep in mind, this is just me in a costume. Nothing to be afraid of. You will see me very shortly after the montage. Enjoy! my gosh, friends. Oh, I love how that montage came out. And thank you all so much for joining me for my Hatbox Ghost costume tutorial. This is probably one of my favorite videos that I've ever done on my channel. And seeing as it took me a couple of months to film it, this was absolutely worth it. And I am so incredibly happy that I have this entire process documented. So that way I can recreate it at any time and also share my experience with all of you. And yes, friends, I will be taking this look to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and plan on vlogging my entire night, which will be next week's video. So make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe down below so that way you don't miss out on it. Again, thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun showing you my costume tutorial. But with that, friends, I'll say stay spooky. And until next time, I'll see you all real soon. If anybody's curious as to what the aftermath of a photo shoot looks like... Hold on, I need my ears. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah every video you're in, you gotta have ears. Yep. There it is. Mm -hmm. I'm in line at Taco Bell <laughs> looking like this. This video is so unhinged and I love it. <laughs> I need Taco Bell. Yeah. Why isn't this line moving? You want it to move? <laughs> no, I am so mortified to be seen in line like this. It's fine. It is what it is. I'm gonna have to do it in, fr in a theme park next week. And yet you'll feel no embarrassment from that. No. No. It's cold. It's frigid. <laughs> I was shivering. I was trying so hard to keep my hands steady. Oops. We're literally next at the Taco Bell. I'm so scared. I, I don't think I can be seen by these people. I have ears on. You have ears on? Great. Oh god, here we go. This is scary. 
that ghost so, car was so scary. That was, oh my God, guys, we almost got hit by a car <laughs> that had no lights and it came out of nowhere. It looked like nobody was driving it. That was so I scary. I didn't need that. Not after the graveyard. <laughs> I still have foliage on my pants. The flora and the fauna. Oh. Thank you so much. Great, okay. We have to bang a you. We, we can't get through that. How are we Wait. gonna get home? We haven't gotten arrested, by the way. Yes. This is... Hello. <laughs> I don't have my ears on. That's okay. Taco Bell. Yeah, a necessary evil. Mm-hmm.